We are starting a competition on the RetroTech 100 Facebook group. Tenor Trade Trials. You have one month starting from the 1st of August to find the best games or systems for £10. At the end of the month, put your video up on the group or your YouTube channel or both. The person with the best haul wins. The winner will be decided by a combination of group voting and eBay completed listing value. The referee will be the highly impartial gamer Sai. You have till the 1st of September to check every car boot, charity shop, flea market, junk shop, dog house and outhouse for bargains. The rules are, don't cheat. Your contestants are so far, Andre Eichstedt, Simon McGuinness from Gamer Sai, James Sanabria from The Gamers Vault, Benny Williams, A Hermit's Hideaway, David Bertel, Retro Games Played Badly, Frank Duna, The Nameless Gamer, Richard Coffey, Just Richie, and Kieran Bowes, Retro Tech 100, yours truly. Good luck my fellow YouTubers. Hello everyone, Benny Williams here again with a Hermit's Hideaway and this video is a VR response to my good friend Kieran Bowes aka Mr Mike Boom Arm which if you listen to Transatlantic Retro Podcast at all you'll get why I'm calling him that so Kieran set several of us YouTubers who are sort of in a small network a challenge and it was called the Tenor Trade Trials Basically the idea is you've got a £10 budget to go around charity shops, uh, CEX and scoop out every nook and cranny and car boot and boot sale and things like that and, and find out how much good stuff you can get for £10. So let's have a look at what I've got. And to start off with I picked up just the only Xbox game that I picked up. This was from CEX and I've never played it. It's called Dead to Rights. And as you can see, that was a pound. But to be honest, on the back of it, when I was having a look at it, it looks quite fun. Hopefully I'll play it. If not, it's just a bit of shell fodder. And next up, we've got Hurdy Gurdy on the PlayStation 2. Again, this was just a pound. And with this one, it looks like a really cute sort of typical platformer from sort of PS1, PS2 sort of era. And I always thought that this was really quite an uncommon game and it always went for a decent price, at least over 15, 20 pounds at least. And unfortunately, I don't know if that was ever the case, but now it only goes for a couple of quid. It's not that expensive to buy. But nevertheless, I'm excited to play it and I'm looking forward to playing it. Never played it. Next up, we've got another PS2 game called Whiplash. And that was £2. Let's see if it'll focus. There we go. 
and this looks really firm sort of again looks like a platform in this style of sort of Jack and Daxter meets Animaniacs or something like that so it should be quite good fun I hope. So in the background here I've got just a demo of one of my favourite Super Nintendo games Biker Mice from Mars which in my opinion is better than Mario Kart. So next up another PS2 game don't worry it's nothing it's I haven't just picked up PS2 and an Xbox original game which I could have easily have done at 50 pence each but I wanted to see how well I could do and some of these games I had to spend the rest of my budget which is one of the reasons I got some of these games so another PS2 game Star Wars Starfighter I've never played it it was 50 pence and it's like a flight simulation game um, probably some dog fighting and things like that in it um, it's, I don't think it's going to be anything like the, um, the earlier games that they did with the dogfighting like uh, Rogue Leader and things like that which are on the Gamecube but I'll be interested to find out what it's like anyway and for 50 pence for a Star Wars game I'd buy that all day so next up for 50 pence Got this in a charity shop and it is FIFA football. If it will focus, sorry, it's focusing on me, so if I move out the camera a minute, maybe it will focus. So, as I say, it was just 50 pence. Um, I thought with it being a Game Boy Advance game, at least it might be worth four or five pounds, perhaps because even just the generic games go for that sort of price alone normally but I was very wrong um, it's not often a fine Game Boy Advance or Game Boy games or anything in the wild in my town anymore but it's probably not a game that I ever play but then you know I might just play it just for the sake of it because actually the earlier sort of NES era upwards uh, football games are actually quite enjoyable whereas I don't like the later ones because I'm not into football as a sport anyway so for my next game I've got Yogi Bear on the Commodore 64 and this was part of three games which I paid I think it was £2.54, uh, it was either £2 or £2.54, a set of three games anyway, which was a good eBay win, I was quite pleased with that. And then we have the very awesome Gauntlet game, I'm just going to come out of the viewfinder because it keeps trying to focus on my head rather than focus on the games here. There we go, Gauntlet for the Commodore 64. You should, everyone should know what Gauntlet is by now. And then I've got Rastan and the Commodore 64 as well, which by all accounts is a pretty poor port of the game. But I'll have to see for myself and find out. I'll get the Commodore 64 back out of the attic which I only put up there a couple of weeks ago to make some shell space just for now and then try out the data set because I've never tried my data set yet and finally I picked up a Sega Mega Drive light phaser that was £3 in CEX and I think that my budget came to £10 exactly in the end so that was my entry for the Tenor Trade Trials thank you to Kieran for organising it and it was good fun it's a good idea to get some interaction with other channels and hopefully 
get a bit more of a smaller gaming community between some of the low-key YouTubers. Um, hopefully I'm going to be back to making some more videos over the next couple of weeks with the girls being back to school, so stay tuned for that, and thanks for tuning in.